Hello, in this presentation I will talk about the kinematic control of robot manipulators. The aims of the presentation are on the one hand to introduce the kinematic control of robot manipulators through the use of their Jacobi matrix. In this sense, we will derive expressions to justify the proposed controller, first using the inverse of the Jacobi matrix and then using the pseudo inverse, particularly useful for redundant robots. The idea behind those controllers is that joint velocities will be proportional to the error between the end effector and the trajectory, with a feedforward term corresponding to the velocity of the trajectory. At the end of the presentation I will show some examples to see how these controllers perform under different tasks. The aim of the kinematic controller is to provide a state feedback control law being the state of the robot, the positions or angles of joints. This control law will provide an expression in terms of joint velocities that must be applied so that the end effector follows a path or trajectory, defined in the robot's workspace. The path is defined with the three Cartesian positions coordinates P and three orientations, here defined with the vector of Euler angles Phi. The kinematic controller will use the forward kinematics to compute the end effector position, but it will also use its linearized model using the robot Sikomian. More specifically, in this presentation we will use the analytical Jacobian to compute the velocity of the end effector, a vector containing the linear velocity terms and the angular velocity terms related to Euler angles. If we define the error signal as the difference between the reference trajectory and the current position of the end effector, we can derive the error dynamics from its derivative. Obviously, the derivative of the error is the difference between the velocity of the trajectory and the velocity of the end effector. Using the differential kinematic model, we can express this error as a function of q and the derivative of q. Now, we impose the error dynamics will tend to zero if we select a proper gain matrix as shown. If we replace the expressions of the error and its derivative into the error dynamic equation, we will get a state feedback control law in which the joint velocities become the control action to be applied. As we can clearly see, the main requirement for this controller is to be able to compute the inverse of the Jacobian. This is not possible if the robot is on a singular configuration. The structure of this controller using the inverse of the Jacobian is shown in the figure. As it can be seen, it requires the trajectory and its derivative as a feedforward term. These trajectories can be obtained from the trajectory generator, as we discussed in a previous video. The computed joint velocities will be indeed speed commands that we would send to the robot controller and a low-level controller will ensure to follow these speeds at a higher bandwidth, so that from the point of view of this kinematic controller, the robot behaves as a pure integrator. In this example, we see the path of the end effector of a robotic arm moving first in a straight line to a corner of a square and then making a square path of 100 mm on each side. The trajectories have been generated using cubic expressions in the Cartesian space so that every 5 seconds it must reach a different corner of the square. As it can be seen, the robot end effector position depicted in black in the figure on the left follows the proposed square trajectory partially because the initial error between the robot trajectory is zero and the errors as a consequence of the non-linearities or low-level dynamics are perfectly assumed by the kinematic controller. In this case, the trajectory is specified not only in positions but also in orientations, so that the robot must have a given end effector orientation too, which is constant in this case. Sometimes the Jacobian matrix is not a square matrix because the robot has more degrees of freedom than the task to be executed, or simply the Jacobian matrix is not invertible because it is in a singular situation. 
In this case, you can use the pseudo inverse instead of the inverse of the Jacobian matrix, which could provide a correct solution preventing at least numerical issues. If we use regularization techniques, this allows us, for example, to control fewer variables if we remove certain rows of the Jacobian matrix, let's say from the reference vectors, from the end effector vector, etc. Ultimately, this is what determines the task to be performed by the robot. In fact, the pseudo inverse provides the least square solution of the smallest possible norm of Q dot. But there might be other solutions that fulfill the main task and at the same time try to achieve other goals such as avoiding joint limits or avoiding some regions of the configuration space, let's say to avoid a collision. We will discuss these ideas in a different presentation. Anyway, here we discuss two possible tasks of a classic robot arm. The first task consists of positioning the end effector, but we don't care about its orientation. In this case, we will use the first three rows of the Jacobi matrix, as well as the first three rows of the vector x, xref, and xref dot. If, on the other hand, we want the tool to be perpendicular to a horizontal plane, but the orientation in the set axis is not relevant, as would be the case for example of drilling operations, then we will use the first five rows of the corresponding matrices and vectors to perform the task, leaving the gamma orientation with respect to the set axis free. The structure of the proportional controller with the pseudo inverse uh, with the, of the Jacobian is identical to the previous case, so we don't discuss this further. Here we see an example for the case of position and orientation control but with free gamma angle. You can see that the kinematic control solution is practically the same as the previous one but with a conceptually important difference. Gamma orientation of the end effector, which is drawn in orange uh, in the lower part of the central figure, you can see there that there has a deviation with respect to the zero value compared to the previous result. This does not mean that this controller has greater errors than the previous one. It simply means that this orientation is not part of the error to be corrected and therefore it has more degrees of freedom to choose certain speeds. Here we can see the case in which we only perform the position control. The orientation of the end effector is totally free. As it can be seen, now the orientation of the tool is totally different from the previous case, even though the, pos the solutions uh, or the, 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 the end effector trajectory describes the same solution. This task could represent a polishing operation with a spherical shaped tool, for example with a round foam or something similar. In that task, it is not so relevant to have an exact orientation as long as you tend to some uh, reference configuration. We can take the advantage of this relaxation to get the joints to take different values, to avoid, for example, singularities or other aspects that we might consider convenient. Regarding how to take this advantage uh, of extra degrees of freedom the robot has will be uh, discussed in a, the next presentation. In this presentation, I have presented a set of kinematic controllers for robot manipulators. Thank you very much.